Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai. I am so excited to have amazing guests today. I was looking all bashful, looking all shy to be here. This is a new side of Stephen Haynes, which I have not seen before, uh, because I first met Stephen in 2016, <laughs> when I was first starting my business, and you wrote me a lovely message in your book which says, Jennifer, you're the sunshine in the star. Your business will be grand. And this week I had my fifth, uh, I finished my fifth year of business. So thanks to people like you cheering me on. Uh, it was amazing. But let me tell if those of you who don't know Stephen, where have you been? Because he is multi-talented, multi-passionate. He's worked with legends like Diana Ross, Utada Hikaru, I know. And he's, he's just mm -hmm. this, you know, he's this boy from San Francisco. How did, how did all this happen? Uh, but he's a dancer. He's worked with some of the most amazing beauty queens. He's an actor. I saw him get uh, shot in the head by a sniper <laughs> last night. Was, don't worry. In a Conan, I've kind of given spoiler alert. Um, in the Conan movie, Dimensional Sniper is the English title. Bill Murphy. Sorry, that didn't, didn't end well for Bill, did it? <laughs> um, he's an author. Um, he's also, though, changing the definition of beauty in Japan. He's recently launched a plus size beauty pageant, I believe, called The Today's Woman, and an award winner, a documentary award winner, the LA Diversity Film Festival as the executive producer, and also starring in, I saw there were some shots of you, of uh, You Decide, which uh, we are going to talk about today. It was so exciting. But the reason that I invited Stephen to be on this show, we're talking about Ikigai, right? This feeling of being here, being very human, icky, icky, happy to be here. When I have met Stephen professionally, he has always been the person who, you know, he's in the room. He lets you know he's in the room, has this amazing presence, gorgeous energy. Like I feel you are like Ikigai in a bottle like one brand of Ikigai in a bottle. But what is even more special about you, Stephen, is that you allow other people to feel their Ikigai. You have given so much confidence and energy to so many women um, and, and, and men as well, I'm sure, and, and everyone else. Um, but specifically, I have come across you in like women's networks and just seeing how you transform the way people hold themselves, how they feel about themselves, it's, it's a real treat and I'm so excited to for you to share that with the, the listeners and the people watching Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai. So welcome, Stephen Haynes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank I'm, you. I'm overwhelmed by the words you said. It's, it's, it's beautiful, I thank you. Um, I'm very honored to be here. Uh, it's raining outside, but it's beautiful in the inside. And I'm looking forward to the interview and I'm especially looking forward to you Aww. and the things you ask. Thank you, thank you. And well, you know, Stephen, everything I said is true. It's your life, you know, this is, this is what you do. Um, but it's, it's always nice to hear, oh, wow, yeah, I did that. Yeah, this is me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a pretty amazing person, thanks. Yeah, but so well, humble, so humble as well. Well, first thing, um, I've been fortunate enough to do many things, mm. but I don't think I'm special. I honestly think I'm the same as anyone else. I just sometimes feel I got a lucky card hand. Yeah. And if we get a lucky card hand and you look at your cards, you have to always feel you have to give back mm. because what would be worth having anything if everyone else can have. and if we allow ourselves to think we're higher than someone else or more professional than someone else or even more special than someone else that wouldn't make no one feel equal and that would make me feel unhappy it's amazing. I really, you're, you're getting quite emotional. What's coming up for you in there, Stephen? Um, I just, so many people applaud me. Yeah. 
Right. And um, I think it's a beautiful thing, but it makes me sometimes a little bit nervous. Okay. Because um, honestly, I'm very fortunate. I get to do what I enjoy. So when I get the applause, I'm always thinking, what's that for? <laughs> <laughs> what am I getting that for? And then I, it, it makes me realize how fortunate I am. But if I can receive this applause and the person next to me received the applause, I would feel more excited. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And just one side getting the applause and the other side don't get it. Yeah. Yes. But that's, that's okay. Yeah. Well, we, I, maybe we can, um, we can get into um, some elements of that, you know, how, how the work you do is, is impacting other people with some of these, um, these newer projects. But before we, okay. we get into the details of those, because I know that you're very passionate and want to want to talk about them, and I want to hear all about them as well. Okay. Um, I just want to take one step back. And just thinking about this, this icky guy, like what gets you out of bed in the morning? You know, why, why are you here? What makes you, what makes you alive? <laughs> you should ask my next door neighbors. Because they're <laughs> like, when does that guy sleep? But actually it's, it's, when I was asked by you to do this interview, I was like, wow, because actually this is my next, my newest book coming out. Ooh. And it's, yeah, and I can tell everyone, it's based on why you get out of the bed. And it's also based on what I do when I get out of the bed. Mm. So I'll tell them a couple of secrets Ooh, actually. Yes. Yeah. Get so your actually, pens and papers out, ladies and gents. <laughs> actually, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is make up my bed. I make up my bed every single morning because I'm the kind of person when I get up in the morning, I make up the bed and I already know what my plans are for today. I don't have to wake up and think, mm, don't show them, what am I going to do? I know what I'm going to do. And I'm not the kind of person who goes back to bed until it's time to go back to bed. So the first thing in the morning, I wake up, I make up the bed to start the day. And then? Then I get started like a, like a typhoon. It doesn't. Even, um, I have a schedule and I make my schedule and I like it to rotate from when I wake up until it's time to stop. It's always something planned. I, I plan my day. I don't want to. Some people call it planned. Some call it spontaneous, but I don't do. I plan what I'm going to do for the day. So I know what I have to achieve by the end of the day. I write everything on a piece of paper. Da, yeah. da, da, da. Very and analog. Love of, it. Yeah. Very analog. It's honestly it true. Works. And at the end of the day, I have to erase everything. And I don't go to bed until it's all completed. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's wow. my rule to myself. My I, guess, I guess that is how you manage to play every single card in your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I love day. I love the day. And I actually say by six o'clock, the time is almost over because mm -hmm. the clock is going down and the sun is going down and it becomes into night. And I try to have everything done. Yeah. I like to accomplish what I set out to accomplish for the day. And, and of those, you know, those, those times in your day where, you know, we all, well, I, I guess mm -hmm. have I certainly have you know different different things which I enjoy more and less about mm -hmm. my day I don't think for me being like this is icky guy this is icky guy this is icky, like all the time you know doing my <laughs> receipts is not the mm -hmm. moment but talking to you now <laughs> I definitely am feeling like I'm I'm fully alive and here with you yeah. um what are the parts of your day where you feel you know flow or feeling yeah, mo most alive. When I go outside, it's a beautiful question, actually. I get most of my ideas from outside. Mm. I'm not a stay-home person. I love the outside. I love to see the people. I love to see how people are reacting towards each other. I like to watch what someone is doing. Because mm. I'll give an example. Just before this, I had a meeting in a coffee shop. First thing I noticed, a young lady in there doing her hair and makeup. That was like the biggest minus to me you could imagine it's not fair for someone to do their makeup in a restaurant or a coffee shop for there's a couple reasons i call it one of it it's beauty secret <gasps> you never tell you never tell what you're wearing or how you're doing your makeup that's called beauty 
And second, it's not fair to the person sitting next, next to you. The manner you're doing your hair while they're eating their lunch, it's not, it's not, it's not clear. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Have a bit of dandruff on you. Right. Have that. a little it bit might be in, in, your, in your sandwich. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's not exactly, it's not, it's not that very, very yeah. well taken. So that's, that's today's no, no. <laughs> so so how have you, how have you managed, um, like with lockdown and everything, did that affect you? Obviously lots of pageants were canceled yeah. and those things. Like, how did you deal with that? Actually, with the lockdown, I was able to write two books. Actually, write one book and finish one book. I finished my book about what we were just mentioned. Yeah. What do I do when I wake up in the morning? And then my next book, which is my children's book. And it's called Good Morning to You. And for me, I think children and the elderly are the most important people mm -hmm. because we have to teach the children how to grow and it's very important for all of us if we have children or if we don't mm -hmm. we're all uncles and aunts grandma and grandpa because I look at the world as all one we have to help each other respect each other and treat each other to be fair to one another and it should all start by childhood because I believe the children are our future and then also our elderly mm. they've been everything to us and they can't be forgotten and they have to be respected and we have to show them the love and the honor and the joy that they taught us in their elderly age to feel special and then us in the middle we're just the middle people. <laughs> we're, the, we're the people that have to keep the canoe rowing. Yeah. And we have to keep it rowing for everyone to get on board. Mm. That's the way. Yeah. But sound, uh, this, this children's mm -hmm. book, is this something which has been brewing in you for a while or did it come by surprise? No, it's been growing for a long time, actually. It was a song that I made into a book. Yeah. Oh, dun, da, da, da. yeah. It's a song Great repurposing. Very yeah. friendly. <laughs> yeah. I tell everything true. It's a, it's a song that I created into a, into a book. Right. So, yeah. Cool. Yes. I also, I wrote and uh, I illustrated, wrote and published a children's book in lockdown oh. as well, which was not something which I like had a plan for. Um, so that's kind of why I asked this very specific question, but it was just something which kind of grew and doing the process made me feel really happy. It was really joyful. It was, it was very light and yeah, now I did it. It's great. It's great then feeling. I'm going to, I'm going to say to you this, I'm going to ask you pointers and questions later on, on who I should go to for my um, publishing company. I haven't decided yet right, and so which way I should look at it. So we will chat. Next thing. We'll <laughs> chat later on. on. We'll chat later on. It's not a bestseller, so I might not be the first person to talk to you about this. But we'll we'll get on. We'll get on. I think you have some, uh, yeah, diff more experience with your many many books. Um, but so let's let's talk then about some of your newer newer projects. Where would you like to begin? Well, I have several. So how about the movie? Let's talk about the movie. Okay. So let's talk about You Decide. So I admit yeah. that I have only seen the trailer. I've not been okay. to the cinema to watch it. So <laughs> can you share an overview of what happens in You Decide, what the, this documentary is about? Okay, actually this documentary, You Decide is something that I created not even knowing I was going to create it. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to the young lady named Kaide. And I was introduced to her by a very good friend of mine named Kodo. And you might know him. He's daytime, a Buddhist priest. And in the evening, he's a hair and makeup artist. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Da, da, da. And he's a fabulous guy. And he's also right now on this, this um, Netflix series called Queer, Queer Eyes. And he's one of the um, gentlemen from the Japan cast. And he was doing the hair and makeup for Kaide. And he saw the way she was walking. And he said, maybe you should meet my friend, Steven, to help you with your walking and posture. Mm. So 
actually, Kaide called me and um, we planned to meet up. One another thing about me, I'm not comfortable with someone being late. Even with this broadcast, I was freaking out to myself. Oh my gosh, I can't get in. I can't get in. Because I think it's very important is first impression. Mm. And first impression also goes by the time you arrive. Yeah. And so we planned to meet. And actually on the day we planned to meet, I remember it was August and it was a typhoon. I showed up on time, <laughs> even in a typhoon. Oh my gosh, I showed up on time. <laughs> and she was 30 minutes late. Uh, Could have all been over. Yeah, so when she showed up, she was dripping wet, her makeup running, and she runs into the restaurant, coffee shop in Shibuya. And I said, whoa. She's like, hi, I'm Kaide. I said, oh, honey, stop, please. Go back outside and start over. You walked in like a truck driver. I honestly told her, you walked in like a truck driver. So she went back outside, and she came back inside, and she introduced herself. And from that moment, I was like, wow, she's so different. She had an aura of shyness, but also flashy. So it was like a mixture to me. So then we agreed on the concept and I asked her, when shall we start? And we actually started the lesson two days after first meeting her. So on the first lesson, I said to her, First, I said to myself, this is something that shouldn't just be my lesson because I've done so many lessons yeah. and this one was totally different. So I said, ah. so I just asked you, I said, sweetie, I call everybody sweetie and honey because after two minutes, I forget their name, but I don't forget their face. So I said, <laughs> I said, sweetie, can I make this into a documentary film? And she said, okay, just like that. I have no experience in all this. I tell you the truth. So I asked her and she said, okay. So then I call my friend Taiki after the lesson and I say, hey, Taiki, I have a new idea. I want to make a documentary film. He said, you don't know how to make a documentary. <laughs> so I say, come on, Taiki, you have to help me. I have a student and I think her life should be, no, should be listened by others. Mm. So I asked her and she said, okay. And then I asked her, honestly, I said, sweetie, do you think you're beautiful? I asked her, yeah. and she told me, you decide. And that's how the movie started. She asked me to decide if she's beautiful. And I thought to myself, if somebody asked me to decide if they're beautiful, that's a big responsibility. Because for me, beauty shouldn't be just outside beauty, but beauty should be something from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So I thought, she asked me, wow, it's like up to me? So I asked her, you really don't mind if I make this into a documentary film? And she said, no. So then she asked me, she had two onigai, two rules. She didn't want to be a celebrity. And she, she just wants to be a normal woman. Yeah. And uh, in English, um, um, in Japanese, architect, well. art, art, architect. Sometimes architect. I forget. Okay, the, so, so her, her day job is an architect, right? Yeah, yeah she wanted yeah. to be an architect because she was still a university student at this time, mm. going to KO University, and she was about graduating the following year after. So I promised her I wasn't going to try to make her to no gay, no gene. She doesn't want to be a celebrity or anything. And we started the film. For me, the highlight of this film to me. She reconnected with her parents and for a while, because of her decisions in life, she changed her life, which means she really changed her life because she changed her sex. Right. She went from a man to a woman. Right. And for me, I don't tell you, I don't judge you on who you sleep with or how much money you have in the bank or your sexual preference or, or that's, that's yeah. your business. Mm -hmm. My business is just to respect you like I respect 
want you to respect me. So she had a little bit of separation with her parents. And during this filming, um, we were able to bring them back. Wow. And I just think that's, best beauty you could ever imagine yeah you know, because i i can only speak you know for my my experience and the, how the perceptions of transgender in japan mm -hmm. um especially here yeah especially. like it's not talked about no it's, it's not okay every, it's not okay <laughs> and, and or, or you have to be as you say like a celebrity you can't yeah. be you can't be an architect who happens to be transgender like, no no it's, it's not heard of <laughs> yeah you can be in a show pub or you can be somebody that they laugh at on stage and yeah. that's not fair that's not right and that's not human yeah. i think i look at it i've been in so many interviews and i'm sorry if i get emotional because yeah. it touches my heart but why would we want to judge somebody because they want to be happy? I, I can't imagine. I just, I mean, yeah. I'm, the, I'm a black guy wearing high heels. Come on, honey. <laughs> I'm like, girl, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm tired of me <laughs> because I'm sometimes I'm too loud. So yeah. I always say sorry to my next door neighbors <laughs> because I'm always wondering. Do they get to sleep <laughs> because I am so noisy? But my point is, how should why should we judge someone for wanting to be happy? Yeah, that's the for me the almost joy thing, joyful yeah. thing. And in this country, maybe many people don't know, it has one of the highest suicide rates. Yeah, and it's. It's unthinkable for me to imagine somebody wanting to kill themselves. And if somebody has this kind of emotion or this feeling or this attempt to do something like that, and we don't even try to help a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's heavy. It can be yeah. really heavy. And, and, and for me, you know, that's, that's why I'm so interested and want to give people many examples of how, you know, your ikigai can show up in the world and to say to everyone, there is a reason for you to wake up again tomorrow morning. Yes. Somebody wants you here. Yes, please. There Somebody is something. Wants you. And I like what you just said, sweetie, um, because somebody wants you here yeah. and they may not be the person, your next door neighbor, which is sad because most Japanese people don't know their next door yeah. neighbor. And that was so unbelievable to me. Actually, my former next door neighbor, I introduced him to his wife and they have a beautiful baby. And I told him to name the baby Stephen, even though it was a girl. I told him to name the baby Stephen because Stevie that was, yeah, or Stephanie. And they both laughed. And they hmm. didn't. <laughs> They're happily married. And yeah, I introduced them. But um, I think communication is one way that can release a person's pressure or their fears, or mostly just have someone to, to listen to them. It can create a um, discussion. And in this discussion, it can bring hope. So your, your, your broadcast title, it's very worldly because it should be given to all. And that's a beautiful title. I think so. And, and that idea that, yeah, just wanting, how, how do we support happiness in other people? Yes. What can we do to, to facilitate that? And, and to... And, and maybe one thing from kind of, um, I, obviously I don't know all of Kaide's story, but just thinking, I think many people, you know, want to have a good relationship with family. And in this case, you know, there was a 
seems like a happy ending or a happy oh, beginning, a happy new beginning yeah, for them. Yeah. Um, that was facilitated through this process, which is just outstanding. Um, outstanding, for everyone yes. Involved. But you know, sometimes those people who need you, it might not be the people you think. Right. And it might be someone who is outside, right? Not, right. not I, in these, these traditional relationships. And of course, yeah, many people want them. But if that's not there, there is still someone else who needs you. Exactly. I called, I told Kaida that we're all Kaida. All of us have a part of Kaida in us. Because like you said, Jennifer, we just want to be happy. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy. Um, I have so many Japanese friends that I ask, are you happy? Are you happy with your work? Are you happy in your relationship? Are you happy with what you're wearing? And a lot of them go, mm. when they do that to me, it means no. If I hear that first, mm, I say, okay, it's finished. And I always say, because I'm, I'm so high tension sometimes that I just go straight to it. If it's more than two seconds, I'm already, okay, it's over. That means no to me. Yeah. And let's start working on it. Mm. Because if you have to go and think, mm, to me, just me, and I can only say for myself, it makes me wonder if you're thinking in the past, mm. like mm, you're thinking back instead of thinking forward. Right. And if, if you go, mm, I said, oh, you have to change the record because that mm, means the record is skipping. Mm. And when it's skipping, you're missing your time. And when you start to miss your time, you have to change the things that you want to, to make yourself happy. Right. Honey, I, I hate to say, I, I'll be honest. I'm maybe number one for divorce. I'm the king of divorce because I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to be honest. Ah! Because I don't think you should be in a relationship if you're not meant to be there. Mm. Because if you're in the relationship because you're too afraid to leave, that's sad. If you're in a relationship because the family name, that's sad. If you're in a relationship because you worry about what else someone else is thinking, that's even more sad. Mm. You have to be happy with yourself. Yeah. And if you're not happy with yourself, then you have to look at ways to change it. Yeah. And I if one's that. divorce, it's, it's divorce. It doesn't mean the world ends. Yeah. It just means it's a chapter in your life. And one thing, Jennifer, we have to all remember, it's the most important thing in the world, that we all make mistakes nobody's perfect please please mm. i'm the king of mistakes and you know what i do i smile and then when i make another mistake i smile more and then when i make another mistake i smile more i smile so much it looks like my lips are glued to, to my gums <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, because good. yeah we have to be able to laugh it off yeah not fear it off mm. that's a big difference yes yeah yeah and and yeah when we're when we're trying like new ways to be happy as well, something which is perhaps like outside of what society expects for us yeah. um, because of how we show up, then probably, yeah, we're going to make some mistakes as well, right? Yeah. We might yeah. not always bring it in the best way. And we right. Might not, yeah, we might hurt but, some people. But we can and, say yeah. we tried. Right. And that's a beautiful thing to remember. Yeah. We tried. If something doesn't come through and you try, that's also great yeah. because you gave your emotion you gave your attention you gave your drive into something mm. and if it doesn't work out the way you planned it honey change ships and go into the next lane i'm from a family of six siblings ah! honey i've seen good bad and ugly so, yeah all so, the mistakes yeah all the, <laughs> i've seen everything but the best part of it, it's the best therapy because our parents would say, oh, you're the same as the other one. <laughs> Get in line. You know I mean? Yeah, five brothers and one sister. Wow. And my wow. mother and sister have the same birthday. So I'm actually, sometimes I, I say, oh my gosh, I have two mothers telling me what to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm right in the middle. And I always say, um, I like being a middle child. Because most people say that the parents don't spend so much attention with the middle child because right. of first and then you come along and they just have that one give you the hand-me-down clothes and, and you know and then they don't have to worry because the, 
the Aniki, the older brother will take care of you. And then the baby comes and then you have to skip over you to the baby. Honey, that was the best time of my life. Because mm. <laughs> I could do anything I want. Yes, under the radar. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's uh, I have a wonderful child memory. I think I have the best parents that you could ever wish, hope, or dream for because they they taught us that you don't have to be be smart, just feel you are. Mm. <laughs> and I think, I think, I think that's me. I don't think I'm smart, but a lot of people applaud me. And I think that's joyful. Yeah, it is joyful. And you bring, you know, you're bringing a lot of joy and opportunities for many people into the world. So if um I want to shift gears in a minute, but I wanted to Please. ask about, you know, so for this film, you said it, it just appeared by chance, right? And maybe, you know, <laughs> Kaide had been 45 minutes late. This would not have happened. <laughs> Without a moment, right? <laughs> would not happen. So first, first takeaway is, uh, actually, well, actually, maybe the takeaway then is, even if you're late, you might still have a chance. With Stephen, but, <laughs> even no, if you're late, you might be able to be It's got to be something through. really, really special for that. Yeah. But, you know, there was, there was an opportunity. You went with it, even though you're not, you're not a producer, right? You've never no, written a documentary, uh, never not written a documentary, you know, you've never been no, involved in this no, type of no, work before. No, no, so no. the, the how can I express this? Like the, the learning that you did along the yeah. process is, is kind of the ikigai itself, right? Like not knowing, like just yeah. trusting it and, and yeah. moving, because it feels like the right thing to do. It feels like an yes, important story to tell. That's one, I, I, be, I love the way you're going because actually I learned this from my parents. Mm. They always taught us if you feel something is right, even though others don't feel it's right. But if you feel it's right, go with it. Mm. When I met her, I'm like, whoa. After the first lesson, I just thought, it's beautiful for me to see this opportunity yeah. or to see somebody wanting to grow or asking me, if I think they're beautiful for me to decide. And I thought this shouldn't be just for me to experience. That's why I called Taiki Sugiyoka san my, actually at that time he was my neighbor. And I asked him, I said, Taiki, come on, man. He, <laughs> he grew up, he spent many years in New York. So he's like, what you talking about now? <laughs> and I'm like, come on, Taiki, please. This is something I think everyone should see. And then Taiki said, okay, let's do it. And I thought, honestly, from the beginning, it can be a learning experience mm. because she's going through so many things. I'll give you an example. When she had to do the, um, not the case, um, injections for the yep. home, hormones. Hormone injections, yeah. And they allowed, the hospital allowed us to come in. I was frightened, mm. honestly. And I'll tell you a secret between me and you and your guest. <laughs> me and the cameraman left the, <laughs> left the room. Oh, my God. It's just he too much. Room. It was, whoa, it was, it was heavy. Yeah. So I just thought, Wow. The thing she's going through to want to be happy. And if I'm the kind of person who's going to judge her, judge her in a negative way for just wanting to be happy. I mean, putting the, uh, the this like, um, like towel posture in her mouth for, so that they don't hear you screaming when you get the injection. And that. And, and the needles to, to yeah. form more, to fall more into a woman. Yeah. And if I'm the kind of person who's going to look down on you mm. for wanting to do this, to, to feel more better about yourself, what kind of person am I? Yeah. Cause that, that so, is not, a, not an easy path. Right. right. That she has chosen. And then who are we to like be putting more barriers, more right. pain. Like she's not hurting going through physical us. pain. Let's right. forget about yeah. like the mental trauma, the emotional challenges. That's why my next door neighbors always look at me because yeah. I'm, we're we're putting her in an outbox mm. for just wanting to be herself yeah. or the new her. How can I judge you 
wanting to be happy. Yeah. That's that would be really heavy so, for so me. me. I'm I'm feeling like my you know the another message then to um to the listeners is is to think about like how are you judging your own happiness, but how are That's you giving I, your your uh, because because many of us are not going through like in such you know this is a, a literally life changing uh, process yeah, but, that Kaide is is uh, is on yeah, this journey. But, but this journey, and especially for Japanese listeners, and mm. and I love my Japanese friends. I I have the nicest friends, the nicest neighbors, the nicest people that support me. And I just think, wow, I'm the luckiest person in the world. And I and I one thing I always ask my friends, are you happy? Yeah. Because Japan has one of the biggest suicide rates. Yeah in the world why are we so heavy on ourselves let it go be free i have a great friend from yugoslavia and she has this word called feel the love and i just think that's the most like come on lovey feel the love we have to feel the love because we have to share the love Mm. so like i said earlier to you if someone's giving me such great cards in a card game yeah. and I look at my hand and even if it's a perfect perfect hand a perfect deck why can't I give back yeah. how how do you look at yourself if you can't help someone else yeah. and I just think mm. yeah. and I think that 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 human connection that way that we are involved in like a wider community or, or even just very narrow, like within our, our neighborhood or our families, it doesn't matter what the scale of the impact is. Right. That that togetherness is, is really a very important part of yeah, it's, human nature. I think it's yeah. a very important, important part of human nature because we're all human and life's a journey and everyone should be welcome to take the same path. So I want to shift a little bit, though. Oh, before I do, though, I want to ask. Uh, so how can people access You Decide? Where is okay. it showing? Right now it's showing in Shibuya. Right. And the movie theater is called Eurospace. Eurospace. And it's on, in Dogenzaka. And actually, <laughs> oh my God, I actually just saw the whole movie in the movie house three nights ago. Yeah, I saw uh, your post on Facebook. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, my, oh, my. What did that feel like sitting there with your popcorn? <laughs> I have my three little angels next to me. Uh, I have my three little neighbors that live near me and I'm their uncle Steve. One is, uh, actually there was four, one came after. 11, nine, eight, and five. Oh, wow. And, yeah. Four and they were ones. Gonna, yeah, my little ones, they're sitting next to me. And every time I came on the street screen, they would go. <laughs> so that keeps you humble for one thing. <laughs> like, what you doing there? Yeah. And um, seeing the way Taiki put the film together, I've seen it, you know, before on the on the PC and in mm. and in, in, you know, in pre previewing yeah. and things like that. But actually the scene in the movie house, I was blown away yeah that just an idea could go that far Mm -hmm. and I think everyone should keep their dreams and hopes and wishes open Mm -hmm. I don't think we should settle I think life should be respected by all and have an opportunity for all and I just feel that if you believe in something even if it doesn't go through try it and I think that's a nice one. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, I love that. And yeah. I'm so glad you got to see it with your, with yeah, your little so, angels. Yeah, with really, my little angels. Yeah. For that those... keeps, you, keeps you focused and keep you humble. Yeah. You're like, what you're doing there? <laughs> yeah. So and as you nice. spoke earlier, you know, the, the, the next generation. So what can they do to support their friends or people in their community who, uh, who want to be happy, right? How do yeah. we, I, how we I learn call more? I call us all cousins. We're all cousins. We're all cousins. So we have to respect each other and let everyone be welcome to the table. Mm 
And that um, shouldn't be a hard thing to do, but a fair thing to do. Yes. Well, I want to shift one more time. As I keep saying that I'm okay. going to, and then I ask another question, but I will ask <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, 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 okay. about your plus size beauty contest because <laughs> I, okay. you can't see. I've got, I've got some uh, Corona Batori, and uh, but that. always like, you know, by Japanese standards, like I'm a big yes. girl and um, I see um, a lot of big girls getting really hard time in Japan and even not so big girls. So tell me yes. about, about this project and because you've been like in the pageant scene, right? Yes. Very yes. specific. This is like the size of their bodies to yeah. me, like type yeah. of beauty. So what made you go, hang on? Actually, that's a wonderful question. And I appreciate the question, actually. I've been involved in Japan, three world winners. And um, they're all amazing. Miss Universe, Miss Queen and Miss International all say Kaichi, and they've all been world winners and just having a part is a beautiful thing mm. and I've been involved in so many beauty contests I even have my own beauty contest I'm the national director for Japan Miss Supra National yes, and um, I love all the beauty contests I love the gowns I love the dresses I love the the lights the camera the action I love all of it yeah. actually I wish I was in the contest yeah I can see <laughs> like your energy of course we're on a very different topic but you are you're coming into your your showmanship here yes actually I have over 600 dresses in my house <gasps> yeah jewelry shoes everything so a lot of the ladies borrow my dress today where you get the dress from Steve who yeah so <laughs> actually my fairy godmother dun, da, da, da. but this actually the contest for me is beautiful because mm -hmm. it gives a lady a chance or a child or or a teen to shine and i think kita kita is a beautiful thing mm -hmm. but i've always noticed that the plus size women are either behind the stage in the audience um, the hair and make artists yeah. or someone just with that mm, finky uh, Ina, Ina. Uh, I wish oh Ina so I thought wow I can make this type of contest because in America this is natural size yeah. I mean all my relatives are plus size we're like partying having a good time we don't have this concept of size three mm. we have the concept of be free, be yourself, enjoy your look. Because mm. if most people look at it this way, they're unique. It's your look. Yeah. Be happy with it, mm. honey. Ah! Yeah, so like, I like thought, body positivity. Yeah, come yeah. on. So for me, I said, I'm going to start my own contest. So I started the Today's Woman because I, I named it the Today's Woman because it's today. Mm. So when you wake up tomorrow, it's today. When you wake <laughs> up the next day, it's today. It's when you still wake, today. Whenever you it's wake up, today. It's today. It's today. So I said, I'm going to name it the Today's Woman. Mm. And these, this group, I'll call it group, but I just call it, these ladies should have the same opportunity as other women. Yeah. It's just like, like Kaide and, and Black Lives Matter and Whatever you feel, everyone should have the opportunity to feel equal. And if, you're, if you don't feel equal, it's our duty. It has to be everyone's duty to, to give the person a chance to have the door open and to be allowed to walk in. Yeah. So I started this contest and Jennifer, sweetie, honestly, it, it was more than I imagined. I didn't think I was going to have to make a limit of how many applicants oh, could really? join. Yeah. So there are women um, who are ready. Yeah. Today. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so joyful to, to have so many beautiful applicants. And the only sad part was The ladies we had to ask to come the, to the next year and this group I have to 
I'm going to write a personal note yeah. to each person because it's <laughs> to reject someone is a, it's a very mm, some people can take it yeah. in a very negative way mm -mm -mm. and it's totally not meant that way but yeah. we have so many opticals right now you know with the social distancing and and yeah. corona yeah. And, yeah. and the now the spaces they only allow a certain amount and uh so we had to limit the contest yeah. and the today's woman is based on today to, to give every woman a chance to be on the mic, mm -hmm. to stand out in the gown and to be applauded. And so now so many people are applauding me for making this con type of contest for Japan, but I don't need applause. Mm. It makes me yeah. a little bit feel uncomfortable. It just needs to be an opportunity, a chance, um, the same feeling you and I want. The plus size women want. That's an easy way to say it. So um, it's just something that should be. So I started. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I started. it's amazing. So I feel, you know, when I, when I hear about like the different things that you've been working on and like your, how you're approaching your, your Ikigai now, what I really admire is, is a couple of things. So if it's not there, build it. <laughs> and i feel like what is driving you is this like yeah let's shine this let's use what i have the skills i have the connections i have the knowledge i have um all of the those friends I have. I have like for someone else yeah, yeah the friends you have right like yeah. use all of those things and yeah feel the love like spread the love honey, to other people honey we're all cousins so five people around, five people around, it comes back to you. So it's, yeah. it's, it's beautiful. Um, it's really amazing. The ladies are absolutely amazing. It's yeah. so far, we've only had the Zoom meetings, the Zoom interviews, and mm. then Zoom chats. Next week, July 10th, da 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 da. <laughs> I'm going to meet the ladies and I am so looking forward to it. So now I have to do the hard part. I have to be ready. <laughs> you know, right. like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So yeah. that's what's going on now. Um, the ladies are joyful. Mm. I have a couple that are loud and that's what I'm really looking forward to seeing. The contest is open for all nationalities. And there's no limit um there i don't believe in age so it just starts at 20 because of tona yeah. um need you die i don't believe in age i'm not a, i believe your age is a beauty secret and as the numbers go up this is what i tell all my students and as the number goes up it just means you can give back more but an age is something that people have to especially in japan have mm. to stop focusing on because they a lot of my Japanese friends, students, clients feel they have to be married by a certain age, feel they have to have this accomplished by a certain age, feel that they can't do this now because they're a certain age. Honey, please breathe. Yes. Stop it. Yeah. It's not written in stone. Come on, drop the mic. Yeah. And maybe, maybe yeah. you weren't ready. For whatever that thing was when you were 25 or that's 35 what I, or 45 that's what or 55, I tell but now. Yeah. But now you're ready. Your time. Come on. That's the way I look at life. Yeah. I don't think we should put a number on something or what you have to accomplish by a certain age. We're individuals. And as an individual, you know your self growth. Mm -hmm. And as you know yourself, you can look outside yourself and see your next challenge, your next opportunity, or the next way to look at yourself. And mm. that's why I like outside. Yes. Because I like outside, because outside shows you what's really going on. And um, I'm, I'm always outside. Always. I'm, <laughs> I'm always outside, and I guess I'm like dry, dry I always got something <laughs> out of my pocket. <laughs> so yeah, I like this kind of stuff. And the doko demo door to the anywhere oh. door to take you anywhere <laughs> take you want to go. Anywhere yeah. you so want to go. So this this is the yeah. way I look at it. It's wonderful. So if you had a final message that you want to give to listeners of Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai, 
what what would it be like first i like to say thank you to you thank you like i said before because first thing your broadcast brings people together and that's the most important thing and you make me feel special and i think everyone should have that opportunity yes. so i thank you for that for your listeners i call my friends and for my friends my message to you would be please don't look down on yourself mm -hmm. life's a dance and may always your shoes fit and if they don't fit switch them around you get the perfect pair. It may take time. <laughs> it, it, it may take many opportunities. It may take many flaws, but your shoes are something that you put on every day. And when you put these shoes on, put them on in style because your life is something you have to cherish because in life, honestly, we come, then we'll go. So while we're here, dance, dance, dance. And may your show always, wait, ah, give me one second. I have to go to my, to my shoe tree. I'll take you to my shoe. I'll take you to my shoe oh, tree. Hang on. Here's my shoe tree. I got all my shoes and boxes. <laughs> may your, can you see this? Yeah, I saw your shoe. <gasps> may your shoes always shine. May your heart always sparkle and may your caringness, your understanding for all and your wishes all talk to you. <laughs> da, 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 da. I'll call you, beautiful, call. beautiful. And I like you said, I'll call you because everyone should have a chance for the phone to ring because the person on the other end of the phone is someone who may help you. And if you need help, you shouldn't be unable to get the help so yeah so to my your listeners who are my new friends i say welcome to the party enjoy the show dance 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 and always get a new dance partner to come into your life to join to join the party wonderful what a brilliant message and thank you so much Stephen, for the work that you're doing out in the world the joy that you bring the spotlight that you shine on other people as well and um for your amazing shoes oh, thank <laughs> you for your amazing shoes like there's there's nothing more joyful than a pair of sparkly red stilettos like that is dun, 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 dun. amazing Amazing. So I hope that everyone will uh, have a chance to check out You Decide. Um, also looking forward to Stephen's new books, which are coming out. And you. Um, if you are looking for any information around Stephen, all his contact details, website and so on will be in the show notes down below. And um, yeah, again, it was such a great chance to catch up with you. And um, yes. yeah, I look forward to your future success and the future. Then you're, you're an angel. And what I wrote about you in my book, what I wrote about you in my book that you shared earlier, it's exactly you. And your smile means, brings peace to the world. Because if we smile, it means our heart is being freely. And everyone should be able to smile. And that's what makes life beautiful. And I thank you, thank you, thank you for the chat. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye. I, bye, sweetie. I appreciate it.